Hello fellow gamers and welcome to Didn't You Know Video Games. Today we'll be discussing why Shadow the Hedgehog for the Nintendo GameCube is a masterpiece in storytelling, and why the story of Sonic Heroes is way worse than you remember. Now I know what some of you are thinking. We get it, it's Shadow the Hedgehog from Shadow the Hedgehog for the Nintendo GameCube, you're taking the joke too far. But let me reassure you that this is no joke. I genuinely, 100% honestly believe that by the end of this video, at least some of you will unironically love and appreciate all of the intricacies, the intense detail, and the unfathomable effort put into Shadow the Hedgehog's story. There won't be any fake facts, only pure analysis of all of the layers of the game's story. And for the sake of simplicity, any mention of Shadow the Hedgehog will be referring to the game, and any reference to Shadow will mean the character. Now, let's get right into it. Let's start by looking at where it all began, Shadow's first game, Sonic Adventure 2. Sonic Adventure 2 is beloved by many Sonic fans, considered by some to be the best Sonic game ever created because of its music, gameplay, overall atmosphere, and surprisingly deep and emotional plot. There are many layers to unpack in Sonic Adventure 2's story. It has the classic story of Eggman vs Sonic, but with the stakes being raised significantly, as Eggman threatens to destroy the Earth if they don't accept him as a ruler. It also adds another element to the story with the inclusion of Shadow, who at the time was a mysterious character who we only knew was some kind of rival to Sonic. He had an air of mystery to him. He was a hedgehog capable of not only keeping up with Sonic's speed, but also harnessing the power of individual Chaos Emeralds by himself. As the story progresses, we find out that he is actually meant to be the ultimate life form, an immortal bioweapon created by Eggman's grandfather, Professor Gerald Robotnik. The reason for the creation of Shadow wasn't just to be a weapon, however. We learn later that Professor Gerald Robotnik was hired by the government organization Gun to assist in Project Shadow, a project centered on discovering an immortality formula that could be used for developing weapons for the government. He actually initially refused, but realized he could use the project as an opportunity to find a cure for his granddaughter, Maria, who is suffering from an illness known as Neuroimmune Deficiency Syndrome. This project eventually took place on the Space Colony Ark, where Gerald would build both the Bio-Lizard prototype and the final product, Shadow the Hedgehog. Shadow then built a relationship with Maria as Project Shadow was coming to a close. After the success in creating Shadow, the military plotted to take possession of Shadow, and ultimately ended up shutting down the Space Colony Ark. Maria tries to get away with Shadow, but gets shot down by one of the soldiers, becoming fatally wounded. In her last moments, she sends Shadow off in a space pod so that he can escape, leaving him with the parting words, bring hope to humanity. And in the process of saving Shadow, Maria ends up passing away on the Ark, a memory that Shadow is forced to cope with for the rest of his life. The story of Sonic Adventure 2 is all about the events surrounding Project Shadow and the repercussions following its simultaneous success and shutdown. Shadow has his memories twisted by Gerald, who went mad after hearing of the death of his granddaughter. Shadow searches for his purpose on Earth after being born and raised on the Space Colony Ark, trying to seek revenge on the humans who killed the only one dear to him. In the process, he bands together with Dr. Eggman, his creator's grandson, and fights against Sonic as a result. Over the course of the story, Shadow goes from a character who is bound by his ties to a corrupt and broken family, to an individual who becomes interested in another hedgehog similar to himself, and finally in the end, regains his true memories and knowledge of his purpose. Though only after setting up the pieces required for the annihilation of the entire human race. Shadow ends his story arc in Adventure 2 by attempting to redeem himself, atoning for his mistakes by not only fighting against the original Ultimate Lifeform prototype, but even sacrificing his life to prevent the Space Colony arc from destroying the Earth. It's a story that captured the hearts of millions of fans, unafraid to address dark and difficult topics such as government corruption, the death of a child and loved one, and self-sacrifice to the point of dying for those you care about in atonement for your sins. This for over two years was the end of Shadow's Tale, excluding some minor appearances in other spin-off games. However, this would all change with the release of a new home console Sonic game, released in December of 2003 in Japan and early 2004 in the rest of the world, known by the title Sonic Heroes. 
By this point, fans had long been waiting for a new main series Sonic title, and were now suddenly promised not only a new game, but one that allowed you to play as twice as many characters as Sonic Adventure 2, and even play as three of them at a time. It was a more lighthearted game in presentation, but that light atmosphere was also more in line with that of Sonic's original Genesis games. It was a brighter game overall, and while some aspects of the game resulted in mixed reviews, it generally isn't considered a bad game. However, at the time of its release, there was one thing in the story that left fans confused, and that was with regards to the inclusion of Shadow as one of the playable characters. During the opening cutscene for Team Dark, Shadow is released from a stasis machine by Rouge, who is trying to gather forces to confront Eggman with. However, beyond the fact that Shadow was for some reason in this machine, what follows complicated things even further. The game shows us in a single cutscene that this shadow, for whatever reason, is identified as a robot by Omega, and has no memory of the events of Sonic Adventure 2. In a later cutscene when Shadow finds Dr. Eggman, he is finally able to ask about his memories, but Eggman's response just leads us to coming to the same conclusion as Omega. Doctor! Tell me, Doctor, what was I doing? Asleep on that base. And what about my memory? Your memory? <laughs> what memory? You have no past to remember. What? Well, I believe my time is up. I'll see you again soon. After beating the Egg Albatross, we see another instance where Shadow is alluded to be a robot, as he sees a robot look-alike of himself. Later, Shadow begins to accept the reality that he may actually be a fake, just a copy of the original Shadow. You'll regret this, Doctor. Even if I'm not real, I'm still the ultimate life form, Shadow the Hedgehog. After beating the last boss of Team Dark's story, the player gets confirmation from Rouge that Shadow is in fact a robot, though it's not quite as simple as that. Hey, Omega. Did I ever tell you that Shadow is a robot and... Oh, never mind. Good luck. You know about cloning. The original must exist somewhere. Omega states that the real Shadow must exist somewhere for any clones to have been made, implying that the playable Shadow may have actually been the real Shadow after all. This, however, is where things become a problem. Shadow could have been a robot, and while unsatisfying, it would have at least been a somewhat acceptable reason for his inclusion in Sonic Heroes after the events of Adventure 2. However, in the first Team Dark cutscene, Shadow is seen in a room separate from all of the other robots, in a different looking stasis machine, and is clearly meant to be special or different in some way. The fact that Omega at the end of the story implies that Shadow is alive all but confirms that the player is playing as the real Shadow. But this makes no sense! Because this follows Sonic Adventure 2, Shadow should not be alive. And they don't even make an attempt to explain how he survived. They only hint at the fact that he did, and that he's not a robot. In fact, one of the main writers for Sonic Team who worked on the story for Sonic Heroes, Shiro Maikawa, hadn't even planned to include Shadow in the first place due to him being literally dead. But apparently, after some developer meetings, they decided to bring Shadow back for whatever reason. As a result, Sonic fans were left with an unfulfilling, open-ended mess of a mystery that shouldn't have even existed in the first place after the satisfying conclusion that we got in Sonic Adventure 2. That is, we were left with that mess, until the arrival of Sonic Team's single greatest game in terms of storytelling. And thus we enter the topic of this video, Shadow the Hedgehog. Shadow the Hedgehog was a game that subverted expectations. 
It finally realized the dreams of fans to have a Sonic game that had a hedgehog using guns, though perhaps a little late. By this point, fans were reluctant to accept something that so greatly contrasted the Sonic feeling that games like Sonic Heroes had set as the precedent. One of the main arguments and jokes against Shadow the Hedgehog is that the game made Shadow overly edgy and changed his character from Sonic Adventure 2. However, he had been brooding about his purpose throughout both Adventure 2 and Heroes prior to this. In fact, the storyline continues from the same spot that Shadow was left off at in Heroes. He knows that he is a strong, ultimate life form, even if he isn't the original, but he still wants to know the truth of his past and explore whether or not what Eggman said to him in Heroes about him not having a past to remember was true. It gives us further insight into Shadow's mental state and emotional attachment to his identity as an organic being. It addresses the struggle that anyone would have when faced with the question of their humanity. Though we may say it doesn't matter in the end, though we may reach a point where we are happy with who we are outwardly, there's still something deep inside of us that longs for a sense of belonging in this world and an understanding of who we really are inside and who we are meant to be. This is the desperation that leads Shadow to accept Black Doom's request in the intro cutscene. Even though it seems out of place, even crazy for Shadow to accept Black Doom's terms, he does so not out of trust, but out of a curiosity and hope that he can finally put to rest his agonizing fear of not being, put simply, real. This is the catalyst for Shadow's adventure, his search once more for his purpose after losing his memories. And Shadow having amnesia isn't some cliche storytelling technique used to set up the story of Shadow the Hedgehog, the writers were using what was given to them in Sonic Heroes. Shadow was already established to have lost his memories, and that along with his surviving the events of Sonic Adventure 2 were still unanswered. This is why Shadow the Hedgehog needed to be created. It was a necessary addition to the story to clean up the mess made by Sonic Heroes. Throughout the story, Shadow has to make decisions. It's not a linear path like the adventure games or heroes, but branching paths based on whether Shadow trusts in his innate sense of justice instilled into him by Professor Gerald and Maria, whether he loses trust in everyone and tries to find out his purpose on his own, or if he succumbs to his desire to find out more through Black Doom. In total, there are 22 levels in the story, as well as a last story once all 10 possible endings have been reached. The game, based on what choices you make, actually has 326 different possible story paths that you can take, with each one having its own unique route name. Of course, the average player won't play all 326 story paths, unless you're me of course, and is only incentivized to play through each level at least once, and get all 10 endings to reach the last story. One of the complaints people have about Shadow the Hedgehog is the necessity of playing through all of the endings if we are ultimately going to have them retconned and end up at a single true story anyway. However, this is where the genius of Shadow the Hedgehog's storytelling comes from. The game didn't want to give Shadow all the answers. Presumably, he only remembers about a single path's worth of plot by the beginning of the last story, most likely the pure good path's plot but this leaves a ton of flashbacks and memories out of the true ending. But that's the point. In the end, Shadow doesn't need the truth. He even says this in the last story, but this time, unlike Sonic Heroes, it doesn't end there. What? I am Shadow the Hedgehog. I've left the past behind me. No one can tell me what to do now. I will destroy you, Black Doom! We are more alike than you think. The same blood runs through our veins. This can't be! Just... who are you? <laughs> Don't you know? You were created from my blood. What? That's right. You are a part of me. Do you feel that? I can control you. You cannot escape me, nor can you escape your past. <laughs> Unlike in Heroes, it's coupled with the reality that he was made through Black Doom, and so he must face the evil nature of even his birth. 
he falls into despair again when this happens, seemingly relapsing back to where he was at the start of the game. But this time, he's given confirmation. Not about his past, but about his purpose. Shadow, it's up to you, and only you can stop them. I developed the Eclipse Cannon. It's the only weapon that can destroy that Black Comet. Shadow, you are the only hope to save mankind as we know it. The future of this planet depends on you. Don't worry, Grandfather. Shadow and I will protect this planet. Right, Shadow? <laughs> Gerald, you fool. Shadow is already in my control. What's this? I now understand why I am here. I made a promise and I'm here to keep it. Today, I put my past behind me. The memories throughout the story aren't there for Shadow. They are there for us, the players. Throughout the story, we are the ones who are meant to experience the flashbacks as we get to understand more and more about the events of Project Shadow. We get an insight into Black Doom and his connections with the Eclipse Cannon and Gerald. And most importantly, we get confirmation about who Shadow is in the last story. While it's only a brief moment and even optional, Shadow the Hedgehog reveals to us in the final story the information that fans had been stuck wondering and theorizing about since Sonic Heroes. What truly happened to Shadow at the end of Sonic Adventure 2, and how he was alive in Sonic Heroes. Shadow, can you hear me? This might be the last chance I have to speak to you, so what I said about having created you, it was all a lie. Everyone thought you died during that horrible incident, but I rescued you with one of my robots. You'd lost your memory, that's all. You really are the ultimate life form my grandfather created. Shadow isn't a robot, and he survived the fall to Earth with the help of Eggman's robots. This short explanation completely fixes the mess created by Sonic Heroes and gives fans all of the answers they needed. This not only 100% confirms that the Shadow in Heroes is the real Shadow, but it also explains how he was able to survive with only amnesia and why he was in the stasis machine in Eggman's lab at the beginning of Heroes. With a single 30 second piece of dialogue from Eggman, the writers of Shadow the Hedgehog managed to completely answer all of the questions that fans had had for over two years, while also supplementing the lore of Project Shadow with things such as how Shadow was able to be created in the first place. The story writers were incredibly talented and most definitely aware of what they were doing. The writers not only fixed the mistakes of Sonic Heroes, but even subtly acknowledged the lack of effort and ridiculousness of even making such a contrived, unnecessary plot as having Shadow be questionably a robot by making the fully neutral storyline of Shadow the Hedgehog the path that takes the least effort to complete, the one where Shadow thinks he's an android. It is pure genius that goes unnoticed even by fans of the game and is why Shadow the Hedgehog is what the Sonic series needed. It concluded the development and character arc of Shadow. Shadow initially being confident in himself despite not knowing who he really was, was forced to face his hidden inner turmoil when confronted with a chance at knowing the truth. But once finding out the dark reality of his past, realizes that he must put his past aside, not just because it was plagued with evil and strife, but because his purpose in life, bringing hope to humanity, was what truly mattered. Though he did eventually find out the truth, the details of it weren't important. All that mattered was facing the demons in front of him and paving the way for a better future. Thank you guys for watching. I know this is a completely different type of video, but I just really felt like it had to be made. All jokes aside, Shadow the Hedgehog is a way better game than people think. I actually even enjoy the gameplay. Like, if I'm being completely honest, I love it. So, I'm just gonna put that out there. Consider playing through it again, look at the story, and realize just how deep it is, and especially in the context of Sonic Heroes. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. See you next time.